Thank you for joining this overview of OpenRS, focused on lending and borrowing procedures for Mobius libraries using Folio. During today's overview, I will introduce you to OpenRS and walk you through its lending and borrowing workflows. Then, Tim Auger of EBSCO will demonstrate these processes within Folio and Polaris systems. Finally, we'll review some frequently asked questions about OpenRS. OpenRS, short for Open Resource Sharing, is a coalition of libraries, consortia, open source developers, and vendors who have organized to create an ILS agnostic resource sharing platform to accommodate the full spectrum of mediated and unmediated resource sharing. Mobius will go live with OpenRS's returnables functionality, allowing lending and borrowing between its member libraries on Sierra, Polaris, and Folio. Document delivery and mediated ILL will be incorporated into OpenRS in later phases of development. Mobius will be the first consortium in the world to implement OpenRS and is spearheading development of this initiative as its earliest adopter. OpenRS will replace InReach as the platform used by Mobius to support direct consortial borrowing among its members. Staff at Mobius Libraries will benefit from OpenRS's use of native circulation functionality in their local systems to support borrowing and lending workflows. As part of the setup for this integration, the Mobius Central Office has worked with vendor partners EBSCO and Knowledge Integration, or KINT, to migrate inReach configurations to OpenRS and support a seamless transition for each library. Now let's walk through what a typical OpenRS transaction will entail. Every OpenRS transaction will be initiated by a patron. If your patron searches your library's catalog and cannot locate the material they would like to borrow, they will have the ability to expand their search to the OpenRS Union Catalog. This catalog is built on the Locate platform from EBSCO. Within the Union Catalog results, patrons will be able to view the libraries that own specific materials, as well as information about the status, location, and call number of those items. When a patron locates the material they wish to request, they can click the Place a Hold button on the record. After selecting their institution, the patron will be prompted to log in to complete the request. Depending on your library's specific configuration, login will be facilitated either via single sign-on, or SSO, or using alternative credentials, like barcode and PIN. Once authenticated, the patron will select where they would like to pick up the material and submit their request. At this point, OpenRS will perform eligibility checks to ensure that the patron is valid and that their request is not prevented by local user blocks or by OpenRS thresholds for borrowing. Once the request is placed, the patron will be able to view the request in the account area of their local library catalog. Now, the magic starts to happen. The request is created and OpenRS selects an item for fulfillment. If multiple eligible lenders exist and all things are equal, OpenRS will select the item at the library closest in proximity to the selected pickup library. OpenRS then creates a virtual patron record in the local ILS of the selected lender and uses this virtual patron to request the item in the local ILS. Meanwhile, in the borrowing ILS, a virtual item record is created with the request placed for the patron on that virtual item record. Staff at the Lending Library will see a record of the request, with corresponding item data, appear on their pick slips. When they retrieve the material from the shelf and check it in, the item will be placed in a transit status and sent to the pickup library. Slip printing for this part of the process, including pick slips and transit slips, is undertaken in the local ILS of the Lending Library. When the item arrives at the pickup library, the staff working there will check the item in, which will trigger a pickup notification to the patron from the borrowing library's local ILS. As soon as staff at the pickup library checks out the item to the patron, OpenRS will facilitate the item being checked out in its home ILS as well. No staff action necessary at the lending library. Once the borrowing patron returns the item, it will be checked in and sent back in transit to the item's owning library. When the lending library receives the material back, they will check the item in, signaling that the transaction has reached a terminal state. Now that we've gone over this process in theory, let's see it in practice. Let's start with Tim, 
and Polaris requesting material from University of Missouri Libraries in Folio. All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining. My name is Tim Auger, Product Manager for Resource Sharing here at EBSCO. Today, I'm going to demonstrate Folio as a lender, followed by Folio as a borrower, using OpenRS to share resources with St. Louis County Library using their Polaris Leap application. Let's go ahead and get started. So first, uh, I will perform the use case of St. Louis borrowing from the University of Missouri Libraries. I will start in, locate, in the Locate DCB application and having found a title, clicked on the record. So you can see the results here. Um, seeing red, Hollywood's pixeled skins, that's the title of the book with the publication date, the availability and the number of copies. And below here, availability and copies, a sort of summary of holdings display uh, for all libraries that have a um, that have this title and, and corresponding items. The status is available. The library is from the University of Missouri. Location is a shelving location um, and or a, a collection location or a branch. And then also the call number. We also have the related subject pills that if you click on, they'll re-execute a search for a subject and then also some additional information below about the work. So let's go ahead and move forward with placing a hold. First thing you're gonna see is a prompt to sign in. If you've already signed in, it won't prompt you uh, for selecting the institution. Uh, it'll use the credentials you've already entered in. Um, and uh, use that authentication to perform the request. So today, as I noted, I'm using St. Louis County Library as um, the borrowing system. Let's go ahead and click through, and then uh, I've used this uh, patron a few times before, so I'm going to use it again to place the request on this University of Missouri title. Authentication is taking place against the local library system or against the SSO system. Let's go ahead and choose a pickup location. It'll be Daniel Boone. And from here, all right, place the request. So we'll go ahead and pause here and let the DCB do its magic. It will create some requests in uh, both, both the borrowing library and the lending library. All right, we'll go ahead and resume. It looks like uh, the DCB was successful in placing requests in both the uh, borrowing library and the lending library. So let me go ahead and take a look at the folio. Here we have, uh, we're going to take a look at um, our requests application. So we'll go ahead and choose uh, pages. These are the types of requests um, that D the DCB uses. And uh, we'll Put it into a reverse chronological order. You can see at the very top here, we have the title, uh, the year of publication, item barcode, the type of request, which is page, and the request status, along with the requester. Uh, it's really important to note that we do not share personally identifiable information in OpenRS, and so that's why you'll have this generic uh, patron name, but you do have the barcode and you do know which library that patron belongs to. So if you need to get a hold of the uh, of the Barron library, you can go ahead and contact the library and then refer to the corresponding requester barcode. So that's what that looks like. Um, and then this is more detail on the request side. Gonna scroll down here, you can see the requester has a requester patron group that uh, identifies the uh, uh, privileges that patron has in Mobius. Um, and then uh, we also have the whole type shepherd preference. And then also really important, the pickup service point, which is going to be St. Louis County Library. All right, let me go ahead and check the item in to trigger the hold. Okay, as you can see here, we're prompted to uh, print an in-transit slip. Let me go ahead and close this so that you can see what it looks like. Um, not a lot of excitement, but it does have the information that's needed to associate this particular transaction with this particular book and end the session at this point. 
Um, so here we're going to pause to let the DCB do its magic. And then we'll come right back with what is happening on the borrowing side. Fantastic. So we have circulated the item to the patron uh, from the Polaris Library. And they have returned the item and is now back in transit via courier to University of Missouri. Let's go ahead and check this in one last time. And of course, uh, updates are happening in the background of DCB. We are now status of available for this title. It means it's ready to get put back on the shelf. So that's the completion of the first direction, uh, which was the Polaris Library borrowing from uh, Missouri University. Now we're going to go in the other direction. All right, so here's our next item. We're going to go ahead and, and choose University of Missouri. This is a different way to go ahead and um, uh, get you signed in. You don't have to wait for um, placing a request. You can sign in in advance. And there we are. We can see that we are actually in our University of Missouri uh, patron account. So, all right. So, got a lot of items from St. Louis County. So, let's go ahead and place a hold. And this will once again be for a University of Missouri item. So, we'll choose a pickup location that uh, makes sense for that patron. And that is MST circulation. So, preferred pickup location. All right. Place the request. Now we'll once again let DCB do its magic and uh, we'll return in just a minute. All right, it's time to resume. Um, the updates in the DCB have resulted in successful transactions and requests placed at both the borrowing and the lending library. So let's go ahead and take a look at the lending library. All right, in the Polaris system, we have uh, checked in the item which will trigger an update to the DCB to then update the Folio system. And it's in transit, and Folio knows that it's in transit. So that's great. So let's take a look at the user, and we can um, see that request. OK, so request. So we have one open request, piggies in the pumpkin patch. And it uh, remains open. It's not yet been filled but it will be arriving uh, momentarily to the corresponding destination location. And we'll go ahead and uh, check that in. I'll switch service points just to make it a little bit easier. We don't have to put it in transit again. Let me go to check-in, check in the item. Fantastic, and yes, we do have another slip um this one uh we'll go ahead and take a look at that fantastic so we changed to awaiting pickup this is exactly what we would expect and this is when the patron will be notified that the item is ready uh, for pickup all right so it's been registered in the dcb as received at pickup and that has triggered an update to the players system the next step will be to check it out to the patron so here's my patron record And uh, I get a, a, a pop up that says borrow has one item awaiting for pickup at the service point. So let's go ahead and scan the barcode and check out the item to the patron. There we go. Loan policy invoked was a U OpenRS UM patron, 28 days. Um, the due date corresponds to that, uh, 6 13, 2024. And we are ready to give it to the patron to walk out the door. All right, so the DCB recognizes now that the item has been um, lent to the patron that uh, the status in the DCB is loaned and that results in a loan uh, generated on the player system. Okay, we're gonna fast forward 28 days from the time that the uh, patron returns the item and we're gonna check in the item. and another transit slip. And you can see the status uh, of the loan is uh, in transit along with the item. All right, the item has been successfully checked in at Polaris. 
So we're going to check for updates on the DCB. It looks like it's done. Let's take a look at the users um, uh, requests and loans. OK, so we've got. Uh, no more open requests. That's what we would expect. And we have no more open loans. That is also what we'd expect. If you click on open open uh, loans, you have none. But if you look at the closed, you can see that the item that we're just uh, circulating to the patron is listed here. And that completes our demonstration. And there you have it. Thanks to Tim for producing the demo using Folio and Polaris, both as lenders and borrowers. Before we conclude our training, let's review some frequently asked questions about OpenRS. Can patrons cancel OpenRS transactions? Yes. In fact, they can do so all the way up until they check the item out, even once it's on the hold shelf. This slide details what staff can expect for request behavior depending upon when in the process the request is canceled. Please feel free to pause the recording to review these scenarios. There are occasions when your library may be selected by OpenRS as a lender for an OpenRS request. If your library determines that you cannot loan the material for some reason, please cancel the request in your local ILS. Forthcoming development will trigger OpenRS to try to identify another eligible lender, but remove your library and any others who have already canceled from contention. If all eligible lenders are exhausted, the request is canceled in the borrowing ILS and the patron notified based on that system's notice configuration. If at any point your library has a question about an OpenRS transaction, please notify the Mobius Central Office via the help desk. They can investigate using their access to the OpenRS administrative interface and will work with the consortium's vendor partners to escalate issues that cannot be resolved locally. Soon, the MCO team will also have access to the circulation exception reports, like two long reports, available in OpenRS Admin, so they can share this information with their members. Thank you again for joining me for an overview of OpenRS. If your library has any outstanding questions, please contact the Mobius Help Desk. Mobius, EBSCO, and Kant will also be scheduling open forum sessions for OpenRS as another avenue for asking questions, so be on the lookout for invites to those sessions. Have a wonderful day. In Users app, uh, I type user ID and in the opened profile, uh, we see profile picture available. To add a photo, we go to actions, edit, then click update under the profile picture and we see two options. Let's start to add photo from local file first. So I pick up the photo and then we can adjust the photo by rotating or zooming it in or out. Save the changes, and now we can see the photo appeared in profile picture section. Then if we want to delete a photo, go to update, and now we can see the needed button. Let's try to add photo once more, but now using an external URL. Steps are the same, actions, edit, update, then paste the needed link and save. I'm opening apps and go to settings, scroll down to users and open permission sets. In permission sets, list select checking all, click assign and assign button, and here we can see user assignment status filter. With this filter, we can see the lists of assigned. 
or an assigned users. Now I'm searching for a needed username. Put a check mark and save. And we see the confirmation that the permission set was assigned to this user.